The ATO, the dreaded ATO, are they coming for you this year? The ATO has released their hit list for the 2023 tax season, where they go through what particular errors they'll be targeting for individuals. I'm here to let you know what they will be targeting and what you can do to help reduce your audit risk in these areas. So there are three main areas that they're focusing on. These are work-related expenses, rental properties, and capital gains. And you might think, well, these sound familiar because they target these areas every single year. And the reason for this is that the individual tax gap, which is the difference between what the ATO expects they should collect and what they actually collect, is around $9 billion a year. So this gives a pretty good reason for them to target this. And while people often think that it's the big businesses that aren't paying their fair share of tax, obviously there isn't as many big businesses as there are individual taxpayers, and therefore these small little gaps that they have per taxpayer add up to a lot, and therefore they put up a lot of attention into this area. So let's look at the first one, which is work-related expenses. And this is obviously one of the biggest areas that they focus on because nearly everyone is claiming some form of work-related expenses. In particular, this year, they are looking at those that are claiming working from home deductions. And the reason for this is this area has gone a significant change. So you can go and check out my video I've done on this topic where I talk about it in more detail. But because they've changed the method, they're going to be looking at anyone that's just kind of copied and pasted from year to year. If you do that, your claim will be wrong because the method has changed and the way you do the calculations has changed. And therefore, you can't just take what you did last year and claim it again this year. So you really need to understand the differences between the actual cost and the fixed rate method and make sure that you're applying them correctly when doing your calculations for your tax return. They also typically target particular occupations. So they're going to look at what your occupation is, how your deductions line up against everyone else in that occupation. So for instance, if you're a retail assistant, they're going to expect your work-related expenses are going to be quite low. And this is because every other retail assistant typically doesn't have a lot of work-related expenses. So this is something to keep in mind is that if your deductions are very high compared to others in your occupation, it could bring forward an audit just based on them comparing that data. Now to be safe in the area of work-related expenses, it all comes down to meeting what the ATO's definition of a work-related expense is. And it's a pretty simple one. You must have spent the money yourself and weren't reimbursed. The expense must directly relate to earning your income and you must have a record to prove it, usually in the form of a receipt. If you tick all three of these boxes, then you know that you're going to be safe in what you've claimed in work-related expenses. The second key area is rental properties. Nine out of 10 people are getting this wrong according to the ATO. Now this could be underclaiming their income or maybe they're overclaiming their deductions, but at the end of the day, the profit they're putting through or the loss on their rental property is incorrect. So therefore the ATO are going, no, we want to crack down on this. We want to make sure people are applying all the tax laws correctly if they own an investment property. Now, one of the areas in particular they're going to look at are those that have a mix of personal and investment related income and expenses to their property. So this could be people using it for something like Airbnb or stays, or maybe they've got a holiday house. And what the ATO want to determine is how long is that property actually available for rent versus how much you're using for personal use. Now, you should be then apportioning the expenses based on this. So if you live in the property for half a year and the other half of the year you rent it out, they're expecting to see those expenses split in two. So the easiest way to make sure that you're going to pass any audits in this area is make sure you're understanding how it works and making sure you're apportioning the expenses for any personal use aspect. If you tick those two boxes, you're going to go well on the way to making sure you pass this area. Another way to help pass audits is to make sure you've subscribed to this channel because I'm dropping a range of information as we're heading into this year's tax season that's going to help better educate you to not only maximize your tax return, but to also put yourself in a position that you know you can be confident that you're going to pass any ATO audits. Now, let's get back into the video. So the third area they're looking at is capital gains tax. And this area is getting easier and easier for the ATO to catch people out on because of the data they are collecting. So for instance, if you sell a property, it is going to likely show up when you go to lodge your return or you go to an agent that you've sold this property and therefore the ATO are likely expecting something in relation to that property in your tax return when it comes to capital gains. Now the same thing applies if you sell shares. They will have details about the shares that you've sold, how much you've sold them for, and therefore again, are expecting to see a capital gains event in your tax return. If you own something like crypto, there will likely be a pop-up that will come up and say, we know you own crypto. Did you have a capital gains event? So if the ATO was expecting a capital gains event, you've had a capital gains event and you don't put one in, that is a massive red flag for an audit. Now within capital gains, something in particular they're focusing on is again, a little bit related to the rent properties. They're looking at who is using their property for some kind of business or investment or working from home purpose 
that potentially could give rise to a capital gains event. So this is a bit of a complex topic and you really need to do your own research to understand what usage of your property will potentially take away some of the main residence exemption. Really get your head around that, especially if you're starting to claim anything relating to your property in your tax return. When it comes to capital gains and investments in particular, it's really important that you understand any tax implications of this. I've actually done a full video on it the other day where I talk about four of the key considerations that you need to make before you sell investments. So I think it's really important to pass this capital gains section that they're looking at that you really understand how capital gains actually work and what needs to go into your tax return. If you're looking for more tips on how you can get more out of your tax return or how you can just be better prepared for tax time, I've actually put together this video here, which is a bit of a checklist on all the things you should be considering before the end of the financial year so you can be much more on top of your tax activities this tax season. I hope to see you over there.